something that's had a massive impact, not just here in Malaysia, but across the world. What if I told you that Malaysia played a crucial role in the mm. world of technology we use? Without Malaysia's contribution, the tech industry, as we know it, might not exist today. Everyone started to notice Malaysia right now. Assalamualaikum, Elsa di sini. Hai guys, hai semua, halo tetangga. Gimana kabar teman-teman semua? Semoga sehat selalu, semoga bahagia selalu, dan semoga hari teman-teman semua selalu good day. Selamat datang di channel YouTube Elsa Widianti Putri. Oke, hari ini kita akan mengungkapkan sebuah rahasia tersembunyi Malaysia yang bisa mengubah teknologi dunia. Dan rahasia Malaysia ini akan didedahkan oleh orang asing guys dan juga bagaimana Malaysia menjadi negara yang maju untuk tahun-tahun berikutnya tapi sebelum dimulai video reactionnya seperti biasa aku mau jakin teman-teman semua dulu untuk subscribe channel ini dan aktifkan lonceng notifikasinya supaya tidak ketinggalan updatean terbaru dari channel ini dan bagi teman-teman yang mau request bisa banget DM di instagram aku di atasyuidentiputri yaudah tanpa berlama-lama tanpa membawa masa jumlah kita mulai video reaksinya are you ready? Let's go. Fact about Malaysia that almost nobody knows. But okay. once you know this fact, it will change the way you look at this country forever. Okay, wow. I only discovered it after doing some research. You probably know Malaysia. Oke, okay, dia udah buat riset ya guys. Jadi dia bukan hanya mengatakan omong kosong saja, omong belaka. Dia bilang dia udah melakukan riset terlebih dahulu terhadap negara Malaysia gitu. Change the way you look at this country forever. I only discovered it after doing some research. You probably know Malaysia as one of the world's most diverse cultures. Incredible food and beautiful, amazing, stunning landscapes. But there is something hidden deep within its history that very few people talk about. Something that's had a massive impact, not just here in Malaysia, but across the world. What if I told you that Malaysia played a crucial role in the mm. world of technology we use every day? There is one resource that became essential to the world's electronic industry, and it's right here in Malaysia, and it all started decades ago. It is not something that you hear about it in history books, but it literally changed the way we live today. And most people do not know that it actually came right here from Ooh, Malaysia. Apa Malaysia is one of the largest tin producers in the world. And back in the 20th century, this tin was crucial to develop semiconductors, which power nearly all of our modern devices. Without Malaysia's contribution, the tech industry, as we know it, might not exist today. Wow. That's the hidden story wow. of Malaysia's role in shaping the modern world. So next time you use your phone or computer, remember, part of it started right here in Malaysia. It's uh, an incredible piece of information, an incredible piece of history that often goes unnoticed, but it is something for all Malaysians to be proud of. Much love, Malaysia. Ada yang komen benar dia bekerja di AMD guys di Pinang dari tahun 1974 sampai 1995. Malaysia kini berada di barisan hadapan dalam teknologi penangkapan karbon dan minyak sawit. Petronas merancang untuk menangkap 3,2 juta ton CO2 setiap tahun menjelang 2030. Sektor minyak sawit pula akan mencapai pensijilan 100. Peratus. Bagaimana jika saya memberitahu bahwa Malaysia secara senyap-senyap memimpin dunia? Leading the world in carbon capture technology in low cost climate solution, making a massive impact on global emissions. It's not just the big countries anymore. Malaysia is stepping up in a major way. Ik Petronas diam, for example, gitu kan. this Malaysian company Langsung. is investing <laughs> heavily in carbon capture technology and storage aiming to capture 3.2 million tons of CO2 annually by 2030. That's the equivalent of taking over 700,000 cars off the road every year. And it doesn't stop here. Malaysia is also taking on 
Pantesan gitu ya di uang Malaysia itu kelapa sawit gitu kan gambarnya. The Malaysian Palm Oil Certification Council has committed to making 100% of Malaysia's palm oil production certified sustainable by 2025. That's next year. This could protect over 20 million hectares of forests across Southeast Asia, massively reducing emissions from deforestation. Whether it's carbon capture or sustainable agriculture, Malaysia is proving that you do not need to be the biggest country to make a global impact. The next time you think of the fight against climate change, remember, Malaysia's innovations is leading the charge. Much love. Bagaimana jika saya memberitahu bahwa Malaysia senyap-senyap memimpin dunia? Wah, luar biasa banget kan kata-kata itu, guys. Untuk memperkuat dua video tadi, mari kita dengarkan pendapat lain. Z Invest dia mengatakan bahwa Malaysia negara Asia terkaya berikutnya. Oke, okay. menarik banget. This is 10,000 ringgit and this is 1 million and this is 115 billion ringgit Malaysia. What if all of this money enter into Malaysia? Will this be a reality? Or will this happen again? So, how would this 115 billion ringgit investment affect you and me as Malaysians? And how can we benefit from it? Well, to give you a little bit more context, this 115 billion ringgit investment is the total amount invested over the past three years to build data centers all around Malaysia. What exactly is a data center? Well, before I answer that, take a moment and look around your room and count how many electronic devices that you have. I bet most of you have at least two. Your phone that you're holding right now, your laptop, yeah. tablet, or maybe even a smartwatch. Yeah. All of these devices have one thing in common. They collect your data. I mean, yeah, privacy is becoming a thing of the past now. But have you ever wondered where all these data is stored? Like the photos on your phone or your gaming data? Yeah, kan? they all go? Yeah, aku juga berpikir gitu Google kadang. Drive, you are spot on. Di mana sebenarnya tersimpan, kan? everyone in this world using these services to the point that the amount of data generated globally every day is about 16 terabytes equivalent to storing 16 million high quality photos every single day so how do companies like apple and google store all these data do they have their own version of cloud or drive well their cloud is actually a network of data centers a massive library where all your data is securely stored and the demand for these data centers has skyrocketed since COVID-19 as the internet usage has surged by many, many folks. I mean, just look around. People are using e-wallets more frequently to pay for food. And in Malaysia alone, yeah, 73% di Malaysia of juga us shop udah via pake. social media, far above Chris, the global kan? average of 44%. And the rise of AI with tools like ChatGPT has further accelerated this trend. Even this is AI generated. Anyways, this is exactly why back in 2018, you didn't see much hype around data centers in Malaysia. But now, they are everywhere. Amazon, Nvidia, Google, and Microsoft. These advanced technologies aren't based in Malaysia, right? Even our 5G coverage is still lagging behind a lot of countries at only 27% at the end of last year, as opposed to Singapore's 54% and Thailand's 46%. And to add to that, Singapore announced its digital bank license in 2019, years before ours in 2022. My point is, Malaysia is somewhat slower in terms of digitalization compared to its peers. Yet, these big companies are all still here. So, why Malaysia? Well, that's because Malaysia meets the three vital criteria for data center construction. Land, power, and water. And before the AI boom, all these companies favoured places like Hong Kong and our neighbour Singapore for data centres given their status as global financial hubs. However, they have one problem in common, limited land and resources for power and water. Data centres typically require about 10,000 to 150,000 square metres of land and one 10,000 square metre space alone is about 1.4 times the size of a standard football field. Now, imagine how much land is needed if the demand grows bigger and bigger over time. On top of that, data centers consume massive amounts of electricity and also water. 
A study by the EU in 2020 shows that the amount of electricity their data center uses is actually more than several countries and the heat that it produces needs to be cooked by cooling systems which also requires a lot of energy which will then generate more heat again basically an endless cycle of heat generation and consumption you see Malaysia is around 480 times bigger than Singapore and you know lah they need us for everything even water supply and as you can see they are still struggling with these challenges in 2019 they issued a moratorium on data center construction which froze all the data center constructions due to its concerns over land scarcity and sustainability since they produce so much more carbons that are over 200 times greater than the percentage of its land area although in 2022 they lifted the moratorium temporarily and opened up 300 megawatts for data centers i mean you know to earn more money ma. but because of these three-year freeze in Singapore, the data centers have found their new home outside of Singapore. Guess where they turned to? Malaysia. It became the top country in Southeast Asia for data center investments. And this market is forecasted to surge by 72% in six years' time, surpassing Southeast Asia's overall growth rate of 47%. Johor alone with more than 1.6 gigawatts of Johor. total power supply has attracted 50 Pasukan data center investments gede. over the last two 47%. years and it's all thanks to our abundant land in the north and south peninsula not in Kiel city center of course but places like Sabujaya and Johor have become hmm. prime locations for data centers our electricity tariffs are lowered compared to other ASEAN countries as we only charge around 20 to 34 cent per kilowatt hour while Thailand and Singapore's electricity are actually priced at 51 cent per kilowatt hour and 1 ringgit and 11 cent per kilowatt hour respectively. And to make it even better, the 100% tax exemption to eligible data centers and cloud business investments has also helped to attract a lot more investments as well. So huge props to Miti for encouraging this growth. And not only that, our friendly policies like the Green Lane Pathway also enable new data centers to secure power in as little as 12 months compared to the typical 36 to 48 months. And faster usually means better business profits for the investors. And last but not least, our nation's commitment to green energy, or usually they call it ESG, hmm. has Putra been Jaya. a key factor in attracting Lingkungan big tech companies. Ramah These companies are increasingly driven by the need to meet global sustainability standards and reduce their environmental impact, making Malaysia an appealing destination for their data center investments. And that's because when we compare ourselves to the strongest ASEAN competitor, Indonesia, we stand out in green energy use. In 2023, Malaysia's renewable energy mix was at 27% compared to Indonesia's 13%. And our government aims to increase this to 40% by 2035 and 70% by 2050. And in Malaysia, we have appeared as a significant player in chip manufacturing, accounting for about 13% of global backend manufacturing. And this industry contributes to an estimated 25% of our GDP, where 40% of our exports come from this sector as well. The semiconductor is essentially a chip that is like a hut to your phone or your laptop, making sure your devices work as intended. And behind the production of each semiconductor chip lies a complex supply chain, which I'll simplify for you today. It all starts with the design, where international firms such as ARM and also Intel create the architecture and design of the chip. And these chip designs will be created on a flat piece of wafer made of silicon, by manufacturing companies such as China's TSMC, oops, I mean Taiwan's TSMC, which is now one of the most important companies in the world. And once the chips are made, they move to Malaysia, the hidden semiconductor powerhouse, specializing in testing, packaging, and assembly. Companies here will then carry out testing to make sure the chips work perfectly before they are sent to manufacturers all around the world, where they are then integrated into devices like your smartphone or laptops. And our Silicon Valley of the year is Penang, which represents 80% of Malaysia's semicon wow, sales, has attracted a record-breaking $12.8 wow. billion, dollars, about 60 billion ringgit in foreign direct investments in 2023 alone, which surpassed the total amount from the previous wow, seven years combined. Billion dollar, so, guys. why else again, wow. is this a coincidence that everyone started to notice Malaysia right now? 
Well, yeah, yeah, before betul. we jump right into the answer, let me update you a little bit about what happened in the world that caused a lot of big companies to move their manufacturing outside of the US and China. So, our two big brothers, China and the US, have been in a little fight since 2018. Uh, and this has impacted the, the global supply chain, especially the electronics and semiconductors manufacturing sector. The trade war started because in recent years, China rapidly expanded its semiconductor industry and working aggressively to develop more advanced semicon technologies like those used in artificial intelligence and also 5G. And the US has been concerned about China's dominance, especially in the technology race since the Chinese are beating them to become the world's top technology superpower in electric batteries, 5G, 6G and even more. And therefore, the US has imposed tariffs or in layman's terms, taxes on Chinese goods, making it more expensive for companies like Apple and Google to manufacture their products and have no choice but to move the production to other countries like Malaysia. And with that, Penang became the go-to place for these companies. Penang's Bayan Lepas Free Trade Zone, the home of Malaysia's Lepas. main electrical and electronic manufacturing hubs which was established back in 1972 has attracted international giants like Intel, Bosch and also HP and that helped create a strong ecosystem supporting the growth of local suppliers or service providers in the semiconductor industry. Take Vitrox Corporation for instance, a Malaysian company that has emerged as a global leader in automated vision inspection systems providing essential testing solutions for semiconductor manufacturing. And similarly, Inari Amatron has grown into one of Malaysia's leading outsourced semiconductor assembly and test OSAT providers, serving major global semiconductor companies like Broadcom, a US tech company with over 750 billion US dollars market cap. As such, Penang now has solidified its position as a key player in the global semiconductor key supply chain. So, sector given ini. all wow. these new investments, could the Malaysian ringgit strengthen to two ringgit for one sing dollar again? And will we live to see Singaporeans coming in to work in Malaysia? Hmm. Perhaps we can consider what our Deputy Minister of Miti, YB Liu Chintong, recently said. And before you ask, uh, the first search was back when Toon Dr. Mahathir ruled the country back in the 1980s and he has helped Malaysia to shift from being primarily an agricultural economy to becoming a major industrial hub. Betul, betul. And let's not forget our pride as well, the Petronas Twin Towers which attracted millions of tourists every single year, mm. along with the Kuala Lumpur International Airport, KIA, and also the North-South Highway which makes travelling between states and cities much more easier. These were all significant infrastructure developments under Tun Dr. Mahathir's tenure. And without them, Malaysia yeah, saya juga be besar banget Tun Dr. Mahathir ni weh. Sosok yang mengagumi beliau, semoga bisa ketemu suatu saat nanti insyaAllah. And can you imagine the EPF dividend to be at 8.5%? If you were working back in the 1980s, you probably can relate to that. While we today only get a little 5.5%. So, What happened to Wawasan 2020? Why has our wage growth been limited to just 3 to 4 percent per year, barely outpacing inflation at 2 percent, which even spiked to 4.7 percent in September 2022? You see, in regions like Penang and Selangor, inflation is even higher at around 3 percent, and with property prices growing by 6 to 8 percent annually, many Malaysians still can't afford a house. Well. We all know the answer, right? Korupsi. Politics. Lah. Politics. And with all these new ambitions Politics. by the government, can we really expect a second economic surge? Well, firstly, these new investments in Malaysia are expected to create around 2,300 jobs, as mentioned by our Prime Minister. And this increase in job opportunities can help reduce the unemployment rate further and hopefully raise the income of the average Malaysian household. And with more disposable income, Malaysians will likely spend more, which in turn could boost the overall economy. And with increased foreign direct investment (FDI), hopefully the Malaysian ringgit will strengthen further against other currencies, making our purchasing power stronger, and we can feel less pain in buying imported products like the iPhone and making it cheaper for us to travel all around the world. 
more exports from these investments, especially the manufacturing of semiconductor chips, could also boost Malaysia's trade income, which means more improvements in infrastructure all across the country. And please, no more sinkholes. However, every rose has its thorn, and the flooding of the investments mostly in the data centre could result in problems like a widespread water shortage, rising energy prices, and higher carbon footprints with an extensive amount of electricity and water required. And according to a study, a data center with a capacity of 100 megawatts uses about 1.1 million gallons of water per day for cooling purposes. And this is the equivalent of daily water usage for a city of 10,000 people. And what's even worse, our nation's water regulator even said that the country could face widespread water shortages in the next five years due to climate change, wastage, and aging infrastructure. And I believe ah, that most of us in the Klang Valley <laughs> understand the frustrations of having no water, right? As the current investments are heavily concentrated in regions like Penang, Cyberjaya and also Johor. And this could worsen regional gaps, leaving other states like Kedah, Perak and Kelantan lagging behind in terms of economic growth and development, resulting in lower employment and lower income. I remember how I mentioned that increasing job opportunities will lead to higher disposable income, which will then boost the economy? Well, this could also result in inflation, as those in the IT and related industries who now earn more will have more money to spend. But what about those who aren't in that industry? They are still earning peanuts and struggling to sustain a more expensive lifestyle. And that's why, as I've mentioned repeatedly, the government must increase the minimum wage and revise it annually to reduce income inequality all across the board. And that's it. What do you think about the new investment in Malaysia? Do you agree that it will change Malaysia for the better Boleh and comment. lead us to Boleh a second ya. search Bagaimana in the economy? Teman -teman? Okay, dari sini kita bisa melihat ya guys perubahan dari tahun ke tahun dari masa ke masa bagaimana Malaysia yang dulunya ekonominya mungkin kurang stabil sekarang banyak invest-invest yang masuk ke Malaysia mengakibatkan ekonomi Malaysia lebih signifikan stabil dari tahun-tahun atau masa-masa sebelumnya gitu. Nah, jadi teman-teman bagaimana komennya? Apakah teman-teman setuju kalau banyak brand-brand asing yang invest ke Malaysia? Untuk pertumbuhan ekonomi Malaysia boleh komen aja di bawah. Di mana tahun depan guys, tahun depan Malaysia udah mendeklarasikan sebagai negara maju. Semoga memang benar-benar terwujud dan bisa meningkatkan taraf hidup perekonomian di Malaysia gitu. Apalagi di beberapa negeri mungkin uh, gajinya masih belum sesuai. Semoga bisa ditingkatkan lagi dengan Malaysia bisa mendeklarasikan negara maju di 2025. Kita doakan yang terbaik banget untuk Malaysia. Untuk video kali ini cukup sekian. Bagi teman-teman yang suka sama video ini jangan lupa untuk like, komen dan subscribe dan kita ketemu di next video. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum.